And we are back. Over 85 million Americans spanning children, teenagers, and adults grapple with food allergies and intolerances. Now, alarming CDC data reveals that one in 13 U.S. kids contend with food allergies. As schools reopen, parents must pre uh, I should say prioritize readiness and also grasp some effective steps aiding their children and peers in managing these allergies. And here now to share more, we've got the Senior Director of Education Support Programs at FAIR, Kelly Cleary. And uh, Kelly, glad to have you with us. And when we talk about food allergies, obviously these things continue to be on the rise as we find more and more people, whether I go to the store, uh, whether you're making your orders, uh, they're always asking the question now about food allergies. And that wasn't always the case. You're absolutely right. Thanks for having me this morning. Um, the rise in food allergies is alarming, and we are seeing now, as you said, about one in every 13 kids that has a food allergy. So when going back to school, that's almost two kids in every classroom in our country that has a food allergy. And I understand also there are devices that are available really that can help when it comes to a situation where uh, a child may incur a food allergy and action needs to be taken um, for parents and also for educators who are maybe in the school system. Talk to us about what's available if a child goes to the severe uh, case of having an allergy and, and it gets pretty bad. Yeah, so I think that you know, it's really important for both food allergic families and families without food allergies to understand what to do in a food allergy severe reaction. Um, and that's called anaphylaxis. And the only way to really help in a patient with anaphylaxis is using an epinephrine auto injector. So at FAIR, Food Allergy Research and Education, we've got tons of resources for caregivers, parents, teachers, administrators, coaches that could actually help teach how to use these epinephrine auto injectors, signs and symptoms of allergic reactions, and really how to handle reactions uh, and food allergies on a day-to-day -day basis. We used to hear most of the time nut allergies is one of the biggest ones for food allergens, but we know it goes a lot, big a lot further than nuts. What are some of the more common food allergens that we're hearing about these days? So in the United States, we say that the top nine account for over 90% of the food allergies that we see. And you're right, those include peanuts and tree nuts, but we're also seeing things like eggs and dairy, soy and wheat, sesame, shellfish, and regular finfish. Um, so those are the top nine in our country. And that's, that's why it's so difficult to navigate food allergies. Um, my son, I've got four kids, one of whom has multiple anaphylactic food allergies, and one of his is egg. And that's, that's a pretty tough food allergy to navigate because it's, you know, egg is in so many different foods. And we've got so many different programs out there that are really geared now to making people more aware and then also assisting and navigating through some, you know, misinformation. But talk to us because there's a program, Be a Pal program, and uh, I want you to get, be able to share with our viewers a little bit more about the Be a Pal program. So Be a Pal, Pal stands for Protect a Life, and that's a program that's geared toward elementary, middle school, and high school kids. And it's really teaching kids how to be a better friend to those kids with food allergies. It's a free resource. It's on our foodallergy.org website, and it is, has, it is includes handouts, it includes certificates, it includes tutorials, but really goes through a couple of fundamentals on how kids could be better friends to those with food allergies. And some of them are as simple as washing your hands after you're eating your lunch in school. I know as a mom of four, I'm constantly telling my kids to share, but really teaching your kids that sharing their lunch at school is not the right place to be sharing. And then teaching kids that if a friend with food allergies seems to be sick or in trouble, to get an adult as soon as you can. Yeah, and you know, we think it's just a nice thing to do, to share my food, but sharing food can really be harmful to a classmate. And so that awareness that's going out there certainly makes the difference because you know, you're doing things with an honest, an honest, uh, you know, honest heart. Next thing you know, you got a medical emergency on your hands. Yeah, and that's one of the things we encourage schools and administrators to really 
you know, hit home on when kids are coming back to school, that as much as we want them sharing in every other aspect, sharing their food is just not the right place. Um, and that is, you know, it carries on from the preschool age on. For preschoolers, we tell them to stop, look, ask, and go. So stop before you eat, look at the food, ask an adult, and only go if, a, if an adult says yes. As we know, food allergens are on the rise, and as we talked about, the numbers and the statistics continue to rise. We know the government is now becoming more and more involved uh, and really offering assistance. And we also, there's research out there for these food allergens. Where are we in the area of research and then also government uh, as they continue to assist in the fight against food allergens? Yes, yeah, so at FAIR, we are a large nonprofit dedicated to bettering the quality of life for the food allergy community. And that's done through transformative research, advocacy with legislation, and education. And I can honestly say that we are at a point that I'm a pediatrician and I'm a mom to a food allergic child. I have lots of hope with where the research is going that there are going to be improvements that we're seeing, and that's all made through the efforts that we're seeing in the food allergy community at large. So there are lots of efforts going on right now, and I'm hopeful that we're going to be in a place that's a lot different than where we are today and certainly where we were a few years ago. So what are the common things that a person can do if there is a food allergy incident that breaks out? What does a person, you know, how do, how do, how do we navigate this? So the first thing is to understand that food allergies are serious, but the reactions really can range on a spectrum of symptoms. So sometimes they could be quite mild with a rash or you know maybe a, a child that just has a few hives on their face, um, but that food allergic reaction can progress. And we often see involvement um, of things like you know coughing, difficulty breathing, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and gastrointestinal symptoms, and then could actually progress to change in vital signs with a change in pulse or a change in blood pressure. And that severe part of the reaction known as anaphylaxis can be life-threatening. So if you see someone with a food allergy that is having some type of reaction, important to administer an epinephrine auto-injector and then call 911. Um, so really knowing what to do Patients with food allergies always need to be carrying that epinephrine auto-injector. Um, I can say as a parent, there were many years that I was carrying for my son. Now, as he's getting older, really teaching him how to advocate for himself. And every time he leaves that door, having that epinephrine auto-injector with him. When you talk about that auto-injector, I know there was conversation that, you know, uh, when it comes to educational institutions, schools, having them present, there's that fine line, if you will. Where are we there? Because, you know, somebody says, well, if, if something goes wrong with the child, uh, how does it happen in the school? And how does the school react? Does the school have the uh, epinephrine? Who has it? Is it the child or is it the school? So great question. So the first thing is that that would be you know, dependent on the age of the child and the policies of the school. But as a food allergy parent, if you're sending your child back to school, making sure that all their medical forms are up to date, making sure that your allergist or pediatrician has signed off on those forms, that you have unexpired medication that is available for your child at their school at all times. I know my son is actually transitioning to a new school and asking the questions of, where is the epinephrine auto injector stored? How many people in the building know how to use it? What's your protocol if you go on a field trip where there's a substitute teacher? So back to school for food allergy families often looks a lot different because we're navigating many parts of you know, the medical aspects of care as well. But I really think it comes down to asking the questions and being aware of your school's policy and how the school will work with you. But you're absolutely right. Having that epinephrine auto injector available at school is very, very important. Crucial, vital. And, uh, you know, if, to have it there can really, you know, intervene in a, in, in a real serious medical in, incident. Kelly Cleary, got to leave it there. Thank you so much. Great conversation and great information. That's why we try to uh, bring people awareness. So I said, food allergies, yeah, there's a lot that you need to know. And, uh, Kelly, thanks for 
bring that information to us today. Thanks for having me. You can find it, all the resources at foodallergy.org, but I appreciate you having me this morning. You kind of stole my thunder. Good to have you. I'm going to tell people anyway, though, if you want some more information, as she said, go ahead and visit the website, foodallergy.org. Follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Food Allergy. We encourage you, please, don't go anywhere. we got more open. Great show coming up. More open coming up right after this.